let's get to Cam Newton. Who saw his interview with Brian, with Dr. Brian? I've seen part of it. I've seen part of it, like half. Of it. I've seen some clips. It's actually really good. Good little discussion that they had. So let's just watch this one um, here first. Are women's expectations unrealistic? No, I'm going to say, like I said, Nick, the question shouldn't be why isn't a woman of age of success of a certain caliber not married with kids? The question should be why are people rushing to the altar just to become divorcees or baby mamas and baby daddies? Mm -hmm. I think if anything, we need to be teaching our society, take your time, young man or young woman, so that you can get to know not just this person, but yourself first so that you can choose a life partner. Not that that person isn't exempt to divorce instead of rushing to the altar just to become a divorcee or a baby mama and have multiple kids by multiple women, just to say you have broken families everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, I don't see no benefit in that. People who actually feel high valued within themselves, not financially, internally they feel high valued. They're not rushing to have a wife or a husband at the expense of divorce just to feel like they've added value to themselves because it's a deficit if you're marrying for the wrong purposes. Okay. Are women's expectations unrealistic? I actually like what she had to say because a lot of people are rushing to have kids, get married, and they're ending up being divorced, and people are not taking their time. <clears throat> on I don't, I don't think people don't should know. take their time to, to have kids because women are on, on, on a legit clock. <laughs> you probably want to get that shit done ASAP before you can. I, there, there's so many women in my life that are waiting to have kids and here they are at 40 and they're like i guess it's not gonna happen for me i waited too late that's one yeah. thing you can't, you can't stand on that you 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 rush to have kids like she she's right about a lot of things she was 100 percent wrong in that clip but i'm a wait about the i would say marriage yes but kids no you need to have some kids you want some damn i think kids. she was 100 percent wrong in that clip you better, you better get to yeah, it I, I don't think the issue is rushing to get married I think it's doing it for the wrong reason. I don't, I don't. What's the wrong reason? Give me a wrong reason why people would get married. I think more, more recently, people have been getting married for the wedding and for the look of it. Really? Yes. For the wrong yes. Reason. People are spending yeah. like hundreds of thousands of dollars on just one day, blowing money and then having debt after. And there was oh, even yeah, a couple that made their guests pay, try to, they tried to make their guests pay for their wedding by charging each guest $333. I saw that, I saw that. that's funny. Yeah. That, I mean, that's just bad financial decisions. That doesn't have anything to do with the, you know, the marriage itself though. But that's the thing. But they want it to be I'm, glamorous. So you gotta spend all that money to make it look pretty and have it on TikTok and have it on the gram and all that stuff. But I don't think that that's the reason that they got married. You think that people are getting married so that they can have just so that they, they can have an extravagant wedding? Not not everybody, not everybody. But I definitely think some people definitely do. For the superficial for the superficialness of it. Maybe not just the wedding, but for the idea of it. Yes, I do. I it think is, now the now, hype is the hype is the wedding. The wedding is like the climax and then after that like they might just be on a decline from there. For some women, I, the, the, yeah, the hype never of the wedding. I don't think it's so much that women are like um, just doing it just for the wedding or whatever. I think that men and women go into marriage with um, um, expectations, unrealistic expectations. Can think of it. Yeah, I think they go <laughs> into what unrealistic, unrealistic expectations. I think they do want it to last forever, but I think that things that aren't talked about, things that aren't fleshed out until after the wedding. And then you're like, oh my God, what am I in? You know, on either side, men or women. And uh, people just, I think we have to get a more realistic viewpoint of what marriage means. Or they don't for, talk at all, because most people just give up pretty quickly in the relationship without really yeah. trying to work it out or really trying to stay. Because you make that commitment right. to marry someone and you're you got to be willing to be in it that means you're gonna have to go through hard times and when, when things get difficult i mean it's just kind of how the generation has become like we leave we pick up and we leave jobs we pick up and we leave houses we do we we don't stay in one spot for very long these days so i feel like part of it is that um that aspect of it. I think people give up too easy i think yeah. it's definitely 
get some why they should separate, but some I think they just I, you can't get along and they don't even try, or they don't try hard and they move Somebody on. Got a you know, too, while they're too fast. Hear all y'all texts. But in, yeah, and for those reasons, I don't think a lot of people get married with the idea of really staying together forever. Maybe for maybe fairy tale forever, but not realistic forever. Yeah, because they're not willing to do, they don't understand what's going to really happen in that marriage when you're with someone day in and day out and you and you really get to know them. You're living with them all day. You're going to get to see every part of them, the good, the bad, the ugly. And so people aren't prepared for that because when you're dating someone, you're showing them your best self. You're showing them kind of a performance. And then as you get to know them, you kind of loosen things up. But it's not really until you're living with someone, until you're married with them and even when you have kids with them that you begin to have to because when you have kids and that changes the whole dynamic of the relationship in itself and so that's that's a whole nother aspect of things that can change your relationship and how you go about it when when i was coming up um one of the things and and again i often cite uh, a cousin of mine because in my family we don't really believe in divorce at all but i often cite a cousin of mine she got married at 18 years old and we're exactly the same age. <clears throat> Actually, I'm two weeks older than her. And so she was born in late April and I was born in the middle of April. But when we were coming up, you know, she liked one of my best friends. And the idea was, listen, you going you want to do grown folks things, then you're going to have to get married if that's what you're going to do. Now, the goal for her to get married at 18 had nothing to do with all of this understanding and life partnership and all of this other type of stuff, right? Because the fact of the matter is that you're going to be figuring out life for the rest of your life, regardless of whether you're married or not, because you're not going to be the same person year over year, let alone decade over decade. And the dynamics of who you are in the circumstances is going to change based off of your life events. Whether you have kids, people going to die in your life, job losses, moving, all of these different things, right? So you're never going to really figure out life because life is going to continue to life regardless of where you are in your life. And so the goal for a lot of these women um, or even I'm going to just speak for my cousin, for example, was you not about to be out here just fucking around and doing what you want to do. If you're going to be out here doing grown folks things and you're going to be in, you're going to be doing grown folks things. And so she got married at 18 years old. And today, you know, her son is my godson and he grown and you know what I'm saying? He working and stuff now, now and going to school and going to college because he in his early 20s now. But she's been married 24, almost 25 years. And she didn't know what marriage meant and all of that stuff to that extent. But the goal was that whatever you're going to do, you're going to build it together. And the first thing you're not going to do is you're not going to be doing you're not going to be out here fucking and thinking that you're going to figure out life doing things that that married people are supposed to do. And you're going to do it within the confines of what what we define marriage to be. So as far as what this doctor is saying, and I'm not sure if he if she's married or not, but I know, you know, as far as what this doctor is saying about this particular subject, she's wrong. She's wrong as two left shoes because I'm OK with people waiting to get married or waiting to have children and all of that stuff. But what, I, what we don't talk about is what you doing in between time because you're not not doing what the fuck married people are supposed to do. And you bring in all of this trauma and you fucking around and you taking plan B's. And that's why y'all over here worried about abortion and, and whether or not they're going to ban it in your state. And they doing stuff and they and they ruining the world and they fucking around and they spreading diseases while they talking about they trying to figure out themselves. And so she's wrong in that sense because marriage is not something that you have to figure out. It's something that you're going to continuously happen to be figuring out the same way that you're still trying to figure out your career, the same way that you're still trying to figure out how it is that you're going to raise these kids because they're going to be different at two than they are at 12 and they're going to be different at 12 than they are at 16. So it's something that's continuously evolving, but it's a mindset of what it takes in order to be successful the same way that you applying it to your career. And if people took relationships as serious, well, maybe not because a lot of people don't really care about staying at a job and they be getting fired. But if, if women in particular, because they always like to champion this thing that they're the most educated, they're the most enrolled, they 
getting to the bag and all of this. They put as much effort and seriousness into the life changes and the evolution of what it takes in order to be married in a relationship and their children as they did the things that don't really mean as much in life then they would be much more successful in their relationships and you won't have as many broken households as we have today while people are still trying to figure it out. I don't, I don't agree with nothing that she said in that clip. I think she's just talking because it sounds good and it sounds good to women and women that hear it, you know, they see her talk fast and she's intelligent and she got her titties halfway out and that's cool because she know how to market herself. But then at the same time, you know, just because it sounds good doesn't mean that it's, in, it's, sound, it's sound advice. It sounds good, but it's not sound advice. To answer your question too, she said she mentioned she was engaged twice and called them both off. I'm sure, but I'm I bet you she busted down. I bet you she been still busting it down for a real one though. You know what blows my mind, and I I never quite understand this. This been kind of foreign to me, maybe because of. Uh, the game I got from married aunties and uncles and married cousins and stuff. One of the problems that I think a lot of people are kind of overlooking, not all of us, but many of us is, one of the problems that I see with, with us not getting married or seeing married is, when did dating become something you do with a stranger? I know what married men and my married uncles and aunties used to, they even told me as far as recently years ago, they always, they would ask when the new generation like, why everybody dating everybody? What what is it? That's weird. You know what they you know what my married uncles and aunties used to tell me? The only person that you should be dating is your wife or your husband. The person that has already agreed to commit to you or to commit to each other. Other than that, people can say what they want. I see dating as a glorified word for free fucking. That that's what I see. And the problem with it is what is what I've seen that it is what has turned it into that is we have value we value our options more than what's good for us what's good for us that's in front of us. You know, um, Anton said one time, and I've heard other people say it before too. All you need to find is just one good one. But when you value your options more than the good one that God may put in front of you then you bound to, you're bound to lose more than win. All it takes is one good woman, even though it's, and it's same with men, you know, but one of the problems that I find amazing is how, like, everybody, oh, I'm dating, oh, dating this, dating that, like, why are you dating strangers? I, I don't get it. I know me personally, I ain't paying to get to know damn, get to know no damn body. That's a fact. We can have some conversations and talk for three months. I ain't even trying to rush to get your coochie. You know what I'm saying? Because I want to know who you is. Right. I need to know if you're crazy. I need to know who your mom and daddy is. I need to I need to know things about you, you know. So, but I, that's just me. It just kills me how dating has become such a big thing, and and then I'm like, then you wonder why more STDs is on the rise and and nobody's sticking with each other because we value our options more than what God may put in front of us. But that's just me. I think that she. I think that she's she's good to stand in front of um in front of a cam. And, and in front of a, um, you know, a bunch of these dudes that got a bunch of baby. I don't think that she will be able to stand stand a moment. I think that I'll pack her up in a good 15, 20 minutes if she stood in front of me. I mean, she sound good for the internet and she sound good for Cam and and, and uh, my man's, uh, what's Nick the other Cannon. one? Nick Cannon, yeah. But see, when, when, when the rubber meets the road and you got to stand in front of a real one that actually know what life is really like and I actually been... I know what you know what it really takes in order to be successfully married. She get packed up in, in 20 minutes without even thinking twice. That sounds yeah, I agree. I agree. She, she basically she had the right one. That shit sound good. Yeah, she she had the right one. I mean, the man got what three baby mamas, eight kids. He really not trying to, to from what I see, he's not trying to be married. I think he's using the old oh, men or uh, uh, can't trust woman thing as an excuse. And I'm not buying it. Oh, we don't get to that part. But I have a question for the ladies. Do you think that women of today or your expectations are unrealistic?
Anybody? Trigger, you want to go first? Do you think your expectations is unrealistic? Um, I think certain women's expectations are unrealistic. You know, we are in this culture, we're used to traditionalism. A lot of us are. And so, you know, we want the man to be the head of the house. And in a perfect world, it looks like him paying all the bills. Um, but in this economy, you know, I think most people understand that's not really an attainable thing uh, to most people, available to most people where just one person can work and take care of it. It's definitely possible, but it's not the norm for the majority that you're going to be able to, uh, one person going to be able to take care of everything. Unless y'all cool with just living in a one bedroom apartment, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's going to take both incomes um, from from both people. And so I think there are some women who are like, well, no, I want the the six figures. So, you know, I could be the best housewife and be there. And I think those women, you know, who tend to be the ones that are allowed online um, are the ones who have like these unrealistic expectations. And I think in large part, men have unrealistic uh, expectations of what a wife is supposed to be. And uh, I think that's kind of where a lot of marriages end um, or get so um, un un unbearable that the woman wants to leave. Because like I've said it before and I'll say it again. We know that in general, women want marriage more than men. Okay, women want it a lot. So for to actually obtain it and then leave it, I'm not pointing at the woman. I'm saying it was something wrong with the with the man. And I, I get it. It takes two to, to, to mess up a marriage, to leave a marriage, right? But I just feel like most women, I've listened to hundreds of stories across years. It's so consistent that these men in these marriages are looking for some type of servant, even if she's still working. And they have this expectation of what a woman's supposed to do, and, and and they're always trying to humble the woman, and it it it's it's crazy as as far as like the black community of the perspective that I have heard, it's crazy, and you know now we're sitting here from around because we're not getting married and everybody's unhappy. If you're honest, the men and the women are unhappy because nobody's getting married. Nobody, a lot of the men don't want to get married. Um, don't feel like it's worth it. A lot you, of wait, men trigger, feel trigger, like trigger, that. Trigger, so, hold on. Do you blame them though? Don't you have I'm a brother? Sorry, yeah. Don't you do you blame them though? Don't you, you have a brother, right? I think you said you had a brother. Yeah. Do you blame them? I have to. Yeah. Do you blame them for not wanting to get married in today's times? Yes. Yes, I do. You do you, like do they're you blame, being do you blame your brothers or the women. I blame the, the men for not wanting to get married. Cause I feel like they they're too disillusioned with these bad takes online and all this other stuff instead of going outside and actually finding somebody that you like and realizing that is no is no one formula to make it work and you just have to work with the person that you choose that you like and you have to start that relationship somewhere instead of thinking a wife is going to appear before you or if she doesn't and she's not kissing your feet no she's I, not submissive and now i gotta go get a passport to get a real wife because the one here submissive. Trigger. you don't even have no. a connection with one person it's not that listen you i have a saying? brother i have a brother and a lot of these women i wouldn't even match them up with my brother okay to be honest social media online clubhouse i hear the same rhetoric these women on here are expecting unrealistic expectations they want a six-figure man they don't know the percentage of men that make six <laughs> figures they want a man that's this the provider traditional like and it's just like when i when i talk to these women i ask them did you was your dad in the household no where are you getting these expectations they want a man to pay all the bills did your daddy do that no the man but but no no they're not do you they want to be the leader you, you gotta they want to call all the shots but no trigger, you gotta understand. That's not true. They want you to have their dinner ready trigger, at night. That's not true. Like they need to be a two income household is needed in today's society, right? If you know what men are making, women are making, it's needed. So these unrealistic expectations these women got are stupid nowadays, especially when they're bringing baggage, when they're bringing kids from multiple baby daddies, when they're not even bringing peace. They got these fucked up ass attitudes. 
So I don't blame it for men that want to go overseas, but let's the passport bros is a small percentage of men. I hate when we bring up passport bros because a lot of men don't travel like that. You said what? They're just smashing more people across the country or across the the globe. They're not getting wise for real because when they go over there, they realize these women are gonna use them up too. It's not about that. It's about valuing women. So you don't. Yeah, even I have just to found get a way them. to hit on everybody. Huh? Shit on men. Did you, did you, did you see what she just said? She said when they go over there, the women is gonna do them dirty too. So first of all. <laughs> <laughs> Throw a woman up. under the bus while at the same time, though, like it don't even. She hold on, man. all right. So, you, the realistic, realistically, the way the reason that I know that most women are not really looking for marriage, but they're looking for the idea of marriage, is because I know that most women don't want a good man. Most women will forego a regular good guy, a genuinely good guy that is regular, and I know for a fact that they will instead trade him in in order to be the side of a guy that's exceptional. 